Hey guys, it's Devin and today I'm going to be doing a highly requested video. I'm going to be doing my first ever Q&A. So a lot of you guys wanted me to do a Q&A, so on my video last week, my huge September haul video, I asked you guys to leave your questions down in the comment and you did not disappoint. You guys did so amazing, not even just with the amount of questions you left, but the quality of those questions. Every single question you guys left was A plus quality, so I thought I would answer them for you today as I promised. First things first, if this is the first time you're seeing my face, hello my name is Devin, I'm a huge nerd and I make nerdy videos so you should totally hit that subscribe button because our family has grown to 900 subscribers. I, I, I am so grateful, thank you guys so much, I never thought that we would get to 900 as fast as we did. Like at the beginning of September, I had 30, and now I have 900. So thank you guys so much for the amount of subscribers. And if you're not subscribed, you should totally join our family because we are so nice and supportive and nerdy. So now that we have all that out of the way, let's get started answering your questions. So Sammy Stern asked, which book or books made the most impact on you and why? I had so many answers for this one just books that I read at a specific time, that it was it was changing my life, it made me a reader. But the one answer that I found that made an impact on me because of the quality was Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I love this book, you know this is one of my favorite books, I love it so much. But the reason it made an impact on me was the content of the book and the plot. The reason for this is that the main character in this novel has purely obsessional OCD, which is a form of OCD that focuses more on the obsessive versus the compulsive. So the main character obsesses over the number three and she obsesses over her thoughts and she's just an obsessive person. And the reason that spoke to me is because I have purely obsessional OCD and I've never read about it in a book and it was just really refreshing to be able to relate to a character as much as I did Samantha. And it meant a lot to me that the author didn't glamorize it and she didn't make it seem like something it's not. This is a very real take on purely obsessional OCD and it was just something that I think was needed not only for me but just in YA literature in general. Luciana Garcia asks, what was your favorite moment? And I'm assuming this means just from my life, so I'm gonna be a total politician and just say all of them. I have a lot of really great moments in my life and I've been really fortunate with how I've been brought up and just my life in general, I feel like I'm very lucky. So I can't really say like any moment is better than the rest, though because I know that you guys are totally gonna get bored of that cheater's answer. Um, I have a couple. The first time I walked into Diagon Alley uh, with my mother when I went to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And the second was just this past summer when I went to Chicago and I saw Firebringer, which is Teen Sorkin's new musical. That whole experience, going to Chicago, falling in love with the city itself, and then being able to meet Teen Stark. Jennifer Hugh, Michaela Payne, and Kay Fun all asked, what is your favorite book and why? And for me, this is definitely Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling. This book, I know it was my favorite because A, I flew through it. I'm a really slow reader and I flew through this book. I knew what was gonna happen because I've seen the movie, but I flew through this book. It was really action-packed, it was fast-paced, I could not stop thinking about it. I love Harry Potter, obviously, but the real way I know it was my favorite is it sent me into the biggest reading slump. It was like a year of a reading slump. It was terrible. Jennifer Hu also, Jennifer Hu, who? I'm so sorry. I'm not very good with names. Um, she also asked if you were on an uninhabited island, name three things you would bring. For me, if I were on an uninhabited island, I would bring a boat in case I ever wanted to get off, a genie so I could use like my three wishes to say I want unlimited basic necessities like food, water, shelter, that kind of stuff so I could survive on this island. And third, I would probably bring my mom because I have no common sense. I would 
not know what to do when I got on this island. I would be really freaked out. So I would bring my mother because she would be able to calm me down. She would know what to do. She would know where to go. She's very smart. Jennifer Hu and Brandy Faulkner also asked, what is your most embarrassing story? This is quickly going to become a story time video of me just embarrassing myself on the internet. My most embarrassing story, now that I think about it, is probably when I went to see Firebringer. I mean, I obviously it was the most amazing experience, but I'm also really embarrassed about how I acted because it was just the most awkward thing. So if any of you know Team Star Kid, um, you would know Joey Richter. Or if you watch Disney Channel, he played um, Officer Petey on Jesse. And I met him because I, the Firebringer tickets I bought were the VIP tickets. So you got a tour of the theater before the show and you got priority seating. And I thought, you know what, if I'm driving all the way to Chicago, I've never seen a Star Kid production before, there is no way I'm not sitting front and center. So <laughs> what happened was I went on this trip with my mom and we were sitting at this table um, in the theater. It was stage 773 if anybody knows what that looks like. Um, but pretty much, let me put my tea down so I can like explain. Pretty much you sit at these little round tables with just like bar stools. And I was sitting here, my mother was sitting here. And we were just talking. And then straight ahead of me was a wall and, um, and a hallway. And this hallway was kind of half blocked off by another wall and that hallway led to the stage and the theater. I'm sitting here talking to my mom and Joey walks out. My only reaction, <laughs> my only reaction that I had, <laughs> this is so embarrassing, was to just go, <gasps> and I just kept my hands there for a second and smiled really big because I'm like, isn't that what people do when you meet people you idolize? So I did that and he he looked at me obviously because I'm the crazy girl that's just like fangirling completely. And he just went, hi, are you here for the tour? And I was like, yeah. And he went, oh, awesome. Um, we're just going to wait for a few more people and then we're going to start the tour. I'm like, okay, I'm a really big fan. I'm really sorry. And he's like, Oh, thank you so much. And I didn't say anything after that. I just kept staring at him because I have never met anyone that I idolize that much or that I I really love that much. Like love in like the fangirl way. And he was the first person that I was like, you're a real person. You're, you're not just on a screen. But the most embarrassing part for me was he did the tour for us and we were all, the people on the tour were sitting in the theater seats and um, he's like, okay, so um, we'll just do like a quick Q&A before we start and uh, anybody have any questions? And I could not even look at him because I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, I'm the crazy fangirl that just freaked out when she saw him. Like, I, I, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> He was super sweet about it though. He took a picture with me after. I will insert a picture because it was the best moment of my life. And um, and he came up to me after the show, me, my mom and a couple of the girls that we met and he just said hi and wanted to know what we thought of the show. And he was super sweet. He was like the nicest person in the world. So yeah, that's probably, it's a mix between my most embarrassing and my best story. Purple Parrot asks, who was slash is your first best friend? And I'm glad you said is because I still have the same best friend from when I was four years old. I don't really have permission to say her name, I don't think, because um, I didn't really ask, so I don't want to like cross any lines. Um, I call her Hagrid. Let's call her Hagrid because I call her Hagrid and she calls me Snape. But she's my best friend. We're both nerds. She was, she's was. she been there for me through everything and I've been there for her, so we've been best friends for a good like... 15 years now? One with toys asks a lot of questions. She asked 13 questions. So I'm just gonna rapid fire these. What is your favorite color? This question was also asked by Pam Mercado. My favorite color is blue. Do you have any pets? No, I really wish I had a dog. I used to have a dog, but I don't anymore. What's your favorite author? This question was also asked by squishylover underscore XX. I have a few, JK Rowling. 
Cassandra Clare and Alex Flynn. How old are you? I am 19 years old. Do you read manga books? No, but I probably should because I hear they're great. Where are you from? I am from Ontario, Canada. What's your favorite YouTuber? Dot, 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 you watch often? So I'm taking this to mean who, who's your favorite YouTuber and do you watch them often? These people, I couldn't just choose one because I live my life on YouTube, so I could not just choose one. I have quite a few and I watch them as often as they upload. You ready for this list? Team Star Kids, Tin Can Brothers, Tessa Netting, Frizzy Voices, Paul and Bananas Books, Peru's Project, um, Katie Tastic, and Alicia Marie. How many books do you own? At last count, I counted a few days ago. I had 158, but then I went and bought another book yesterday, so 159. And that is just physical books, not including my ebook. How many Funko Pops do you have? Um, I have 10, including these three mini Suicide Squad ones, but of the larger ones, I have seven. What's your favorite shop you go to so often? Um, Hot Topic, HMD, or Chapter? Are you ever going to have a gaming channel? I don't want to say never, because I don't want to rule that out completely, but I'm not a gamer, so probably not. What's your favorite season? Fall. What do you collect apart from books and Funko Pops? I collect buttons, notebooks, and bookmarks. Rochelle Renee asked, have you ever thought of writing a book? I definitely thought of writing a book. I think everybody on booktube has thought of writing a book, or even people who are just avid readers have thought of it. And I know a lot of people on booktube are planning on writing one, or are currently writing one, or have written one. I don't think I could ever write one, um, just because my ideas don't generally go past the scene. It's usually one scene and I don't have enough of an idea to cover a whole plot of a book. Rochelle Renee also asked, what would you ask for if the answer will be a definite yes? Um, I would ask, this is really deep, I would ask, am I on the right path? Because, you know, being 19, I'm out of high school, I've been out of high school for two years this June. Oh my god, that's terrifying. I've been out of high school for two years, and I still don't really have a direction. But I think that's okay. Like, I have a general idea of what I want to do. I just want to know if I take the path I'm currently on, is everything going to be okay? Stephanie Teddy 7 asks, what's your ambition? My big life ambition is to become an actress. I like acting. I like creating a character. Dana the Sloth, thank you Dana, love you, asks, favorite character of all time from any franchise? Um, again, I couldn't pick one, so I went with um, Elizabeth Swan from Pirates of the Caribbean. She's just such a cool character. She, she was never the damsel in distress. She always kind of took care of things for herself. Um, Deadpool, not appropriate for younger viewers. Hilarious just the same. And, um, anybody off of my favorite TV show, The Originals, whether it be like Klaus, Elijah, Freya, Haley, love them all. World of Words, love you girl, asks, what are a couple of your most anticipated fall or winter book releases? And this, shame on me, I did not know any books coming out in the fall or winter because I don't keep up with what books are coming out. I'm just trying to get through the books I have on my shelf at the moment. Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Love Marissa Meyer. Red Cinder for the first time a couple months ago. Loved it. Heartless comes out November 8th. Uh, the Fantastic Beast screenplay by JK Rowling. I did not know this was coming out on November 18th. I'm so excited for it. I, I'm excited. I am beyond excited. Hey, it's Aiza. Aiza? Hey, it's Aiza. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Asks, what is your favorite movie of all time? Um, short answer Deadpool I like Deadpool um, but that's also kind of tied with Pride and Prejudice and the last five years Crystal Marcus asks what is your most hated lesson in high school class wise history or geography I'm not good at it I just don't like it lesson wise like what lesson did I learn in high school procrastination is not a good idea if you're in school right now don't procrastinate because things are just going to build up and build up and build up and you're going to wish that you didn't procrastinate. I know it sucks, but just get things done as soon as they are given to you. She also asks, do you prefer ebooks or physical books and why? I prefer physical books because I can display them on my shelf. I'm very aesthetic. I like displaying how many books I have, so I don't, maybe 
it's wrong, but I want people when they see my bookshelf to go, wow, you have a lot of books. Anna Happy asks, what is your most favorite book series? Definitely Harry Potter, all the way. I love Harry Potter. Harry Potter for the win. Lydia Chang asks, what is your favorite store or stores to buy books? Chapters. That's like the only, the only store I, I go to to buy books now. I also like Value Village, just because you get cheaper books, but they're used. If you want good new books and you're in Canada, Chapters is the way to go. JC Bug asks, if you were to make a book, what would it be like? I've always kind of, I have an idea, but I don't think it's going to pan out. Um, it's, I'm not going to say what it's about in case I do end up writing it, um, but it's an urban fantasy with magic and mystical creatures and all that fun stuff. Oh, sorry, Bianca's Cool also asked, where do you buy your books? I buy the majority of them from Chapters or Value Village. It's very rare for me to get a book from... Amazon or any other online provider. Poi, Poi, P-U-I, P-U-I, I'm sorry if that spelled wrong, said, what were you scared of the most as a kid? Um, as a kid, there was this, oh god, this, this is also embarrassing, there was this episode of Teletubbies when I was a kid, and it had this really freaky lion, this really freaky bear, that would just like zoom right up to the screen and just go, and they'd like talk and it was the scariest thing to me. I was terrified of that as a kid. Um, any kind of even remotely scary movie I was terrified of. The Dark. I didn't like The Dark. I think that's all the questions that you guys asked me. Thank you so much for submitting them. It was really, really nice of you guys. And this q and I think was a success. So I hope you guys liked that video. Make sure if you did, you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on all of my social media. And check out my previous video, which will be up in a second with my end title screen. You know the drill if you've been on my channel before. And just keep an eye out for my next video that is all for me and my shelfie.